In this video, we'll take a look at painting an avocado with acrylic paint. This painting is relatively small. I'm working on 8 by 10 stretched canvas. I'll begin by lightly drawing the contours of the shape of the avocado using an HB pencil. I'm only concerned with developing the contour lines and the overall shape here. We'll develop the value and texture and details using the acrylic paint applications. Of course, we'll want to make sure that both of the shapes are as symmetrical as possible. Then we'll begin by addressing the background. I'm using a mixture of Prussian blue and titanium white. Our avocado halves are sitting on a white surface, but I want to add a bit of color to the background in order to create a bit of contrast between the avocado halves and the surface that they're sitting on. For the majority of the applications that I'll make throughout this painting, I'll be using golden heavy body acrylics. In some circumstances, however, I'll mix in a bit of the golden open acrylics. These are still acrylic paint, but the drying time is much slower. With a slower drying time, we can smooth transitions between colors and values much easier. In this case, I'm using a bit of the open acrylics here with the initial applications of the background. Now we'll add a bit of shadow just underneath both of the avocado halves. And to mix this color, I've used a bit of Prussian blue, raw umber, and a touch of titanium white. We'll develop the shadow by first defining the overall shape, and of course this can be very loose in the early stages. And then we'll go back and make the shadow a bit deeper with a heavier concentration of the raw umber and the Prussian blue in the mixture. And since the paint is still relatively wet, we'll work quickly to create a smoother transition between the area of background around it and the transition area that goes into the area of cast shadow. Of course we can pull the brush in multiple directions and try to make that transition as smooth as possible. This is where using the open acrylics is especially helpful because the paint has not dried completely and we can continue to work it. Now, using the open acrylics is not going to give you drying times that are comparable to oil paint, which is a very slow drying time, allowing you to work transitions for a long period of time. But it is a bit slower as far as the drying process goes compared to traditional acrylics. Now, we'll continue to go over the top of this shadow with uh, the mixture of Prussian blue and titanium white and just tone down the shadow a bit. We'll revisit the shadow later in the painting process, but initially we just want to get some contrast in value and color on the surface before we start addressing the avocados. Now with our preliminary applications applied to the background, we can start to address the core color of the avocados. This is a mixture of Hansa yellow and sap green, and I'm just going to apply it to the shape of both of the avocado halves. And I'm using a liberal amount of paint here, and uh, we're going to just put a heavy application. Then we're going to layer over the top of it with darker versions and lighter versions and slight variations in the color to develop the texture and detail on both of these avocado halves. Of course, I'm going to leave an open space at this point for the seed in the avocado. Now with a lighter version of the green that we mixed, again, sap green, Hansa yellow, and titanium white. This application is just a little bit heavier with the Hansa yellow and the titanium white. We'll go right over the top of the area that we've applied the heavy application of the initial green. Since the surface is still wet, we can kind of work this color into the surface. And as long as you work quickly, you will have no problem accomplishing this. And it's important to point out here, at this point, I'm using a little bit of water mixed with the color, but not a whole lot. I'm just using a little bit of water to aid in the fluidity of the paint a bit. And of course, we'll do the same thing with the second avocado half. And as we work, if the color gets a little bit light or changes a little bit, we want to, we want to make sure it's consistent on both of the avocado halves. So we can work back and forth between the two to maintain that consistency between each of the halves. And of course, we'll work as quickly as possible to ensure that we are able to get those transitions from those darker green sections around the edges and then the lighter green areas closer to the center of the avocado hats. 
And then we'll just simply continue this process, progressively getting a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow as we get closer to the center. So again, we'll just keep working with that mixture on our palette of the Hansa yellow, the sap green, and the titanium white. And we'll just vary the concentrations of Hansa yellow and titanium white that we add to the mixture. We're starting here with a larger brush and we've been working with this larger brush throughout the entire painting, but now we're ready to start getting some of the details in place. And we'll start with the, the skin that happens around each of the avocado halves. To create this color, I've mixed the sap green, a bit of Prussian blue, and a good amount of raw umber. I'm not gonna use any black in this painting at all. I'm gonna to try to affect the value of the color by mixing other colors such as raw umber and Prussian blue to make the value a bit darker. Now I'm using a very small flat brush here and I'm using just the end of the flat brush to pull the color around the edges. I'm gonna make sure that there is a little bit of variety there in the line as well. And while we have that color mixed on our brush, we can go ahead and pull some of the color into the avocado itself and start creating areas of darker value and some variations in the color as well. As we create some of those darker greens around the edges of the inside parts of the avocado, we can create a bit of a transition zone. Um, by taking a bit of that lighter yellow green and just working that in as we go, um, so we're, we're working in small areas as we go to keep the paint wet in those areas so that we can work those transitions as we see fit. Now, of course, throughout the painting, we're going to be pushing the values it pushing them lighter and pushing them darker to create the texture and the detail that we need to have on the inside part of the avocado. So we'll mix an even lighter version of our yellow green and we'll start to create some more variations as we go, especially around the edges of the inside part of the avocado half. We'll also add a bit of this lighter yellow green closer to the center as well. It seems like the avocados get a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow closer to the center. But you wanna make sure that you don't create a totally consistent color in the inside portion. There's a lot of variety of value and color in there as well. Now, of course, we need to consider the light source and we have done that to a certain extent by creating a bit of cast shadow underneath the avocados. In this case, the avocados are sitting on a table and there's light coming in through a window. And this is gonna create an area of shadow inside of the pit of the avocado on the left. So to mix this shadow, I've created a little bit of a darker version of our yellow green by mixing a little bit more of the raw umber in to the mixture. And we'll put that on the inside portion. Now we're gonna continue to work the dark and the light within this section to make Make sure that it looks like it is actually a recess within this this avocado half so as you can see i'm using a bit more water here and creating almost somewhat of a glaze over the top but the glaze wasn't behaving as expected so i went ahead and mixed a thicker mixture of the color and used a larger brush to fill in this area of shadow now we'll also need to work the lighter side of the recess in the avocado as well and then we're going to create that transition area while both sections are still wet by working the lighter applications the lighter value over the top of the darker value and we'll just continue working that application until we arrive at a shadow that looks convincing now, of course, there are a few indications of some darker values around the outside of that recess and we'll address that with the same mixture. There are a few indications of somewhat of an orange color on the inside portion of the flesh of the avocado. So we'll address that with a light glaze using burnt sienna, which is basically an orange. It's, it leans towards being a brown, but it definitely has more of an orange color associated with it. Then we'll just continue to work some of the lighter values and the darker values as they're observed inside of the flesh of the avocado to create a bit more texture and a bit more detail. 
there is an indication of a bit of the broken stem at the top so we'll use a mixture that's heavy with the raw umber to create that detail and while we have that color on our brush we'll add a few more indications of some imperfections and a few darker spots within the flesh now if these are a little too strong we can just lightly glaze over the top of them with our light yellow green mixture to create some of the dimples and recesses that happen inside of the flesh, we'll use a darker mixture of our yellow green. So we'll add a little bit more of the sap green to the mixture and uh, create a few marks to indicate those imperfections. Throughout the painting process, I like to tidy up areas as I see fit. In this case, I'm going to touch up the outer edge of the avocado half just a bit. And then we'll continue to push the lighter values and the colors closer to the center portion of the avocado, this time with a lighter application of a mixture of titanium white, Hansa yellow, and just a touch of that sap green in this mixture. So continually we're pushing the value range. We're creating a broader range of darks and lights within the image. That'll create uh, more contrast and create a more believable surface texture. A few more slight imperfections are added to the inside portion of the flesh here with just a little bit more of the sap green mixed in with our light yellow green mixture. We want these imperfections to be relatively subtle so we'll apply this uh, application first and then maybe glaze over it gently with uh, the lighter version which, which is heavier with the Hansa yellow and the titanium white. And at this point it looks like we need to intensify a bit of that orange color that's happening and so we'll add just a bit of the burnt sienna before moving on to our second avocado and we'll start with the seed right in the middle. We'll begin by developing the local color of the seed and this mixture is burnt sienna, a touch of the Hansa yellow and just a bit of raw umber as well. And then of course we're going to go ahead and start to develop some of the core shadow that happens on the opposite side of the light source. So this is the same mixture just with a bit more of the raw umber mixed in. And as we develop the darker side we'll also develop the lighter side. We'll create a highlight right in the middle with a bit of Hansa yellow and a touch of titanium white and then we'll ease that transition from the lighter side to the darker side of the seed. And of course we're working while the paint is still wet so that creating that smoother transition is a bit easier. Now we can make that shadow a bit deeper, a bit stronger with a little bit more of the raw umber mixed in. And there's quite a bit of texture on the seed, so we'll allow our brush strokes to reflect this. And we'll allow the strokes to kind of overlap, the darker strokes rather, to overlap into the lighter sections to create that texture. And then we can pull some of those lighter applications over into the darker side as well. Then just as we did with our first avocado half, we can develop that slightly darker value around the edge of the flesh section and create that transition to the lighter section as well. So we'll work while the paint is still wet and we'll apply some of that darker green around the outer edges and then progressively create that transition to the lighter yellow green closer to the center portion of the avocado. And of course we'll do this all the way around the outside portion. Of course, as we go, we're checking for consistency to make sure that the colors that we're mixing for our second avocado half match the colors that we mixed for the first avocado half. And here again, the center portion is quite a bit lighter and a little bit stronger with the yellow, so we'll create the colors to reflect that. Now you'll notice that if you're doing a painting like this and you're working in small sections like we are, and you have a repeating element. In this case, we have a second avocado half, clearly. You'll notice that your second attempt at creating the same illusion is gonna go a lot faster because you have a little bit more experience. Um, you've already mixed these colors once, you've already went through the process, so it's gonna be a quick, uh, quite a bit quicker with your second attempt, as we can see here. Of course, we need to create some imperfections, so some darker green takes care of that. And we'll also pull that over to our first avocado as well to create some consistency. 
And then just like we did with the first avocado, we're going to push the lighter and darker values in order to create a believable texture and create all the little imperfections and uh, things that happen within the flesh of our second avocado. And remember, if your colors get a little too strong, if they get a little too dark, in this case, you can always lighten things up with just a light glaze of a lighter version of the color right on top. And what I mean by a light glaze is simply mixing a bit of the color or the, the paint with a bit of water and then lightly going over the top so that some of the color underneath still shows through. Now, of course, since the seed does rise up from the center portion, it's creating a bit of cast shadow right behind it. So we'll use a mixture that is a little heavier with raw umber. It still has some of that sap green in it uh, because the flesh itself is kind of a yellow green. And then just as we did with the other shadows, we'll apply a, a darker value and then we'll progressively get a little bit lighter as we mix some of that lighter yellow green in creating a transition zone and just very lightly going over the top of that shadow section. And we'll just keep working back and forth between that transition zone until we get a shadow that looks fairly natural. Now, just as we did with our first avocado half, we'll need to address the skin on our second avocado half. And we'll do it the same way. Of course, we're going to create a variety of line width as we go around the outside. And we can also change the direction of the line a bit to kind of make more of a bumpier surface around the outside. Again, this is a mixture of the sap green with Prussian blue and raw umber to create a darker version. And again, we'll use the smaller flat brush to address this outer portion. We'll add a few more indications of some imperfections, especially up here at the top of our second avocado half. And then just a touch of the burnt sienna as well, just as we did with our first avocado half. Now at this point, I see that the avocados are a little too green. I want to make them a little bit yellow, so I'm going to use a bit of glazing medium. This is a fluid acrylic medium that you can mix with your paint. And this is going to allow me to create a very, very, very light and transparent glaze of yellow and I'm using Hansa yellow mixed with titanium white and I'm just going to go over the top of the applications that I've already got on the surface of course I'm making sure that this the surface is completely dry before applying this glaze over the top and we can just very slowly uh, manipulate the overall color of the surface we can also affect the value by applying glazes in this manner this gives us a lot of control um, and we can slowly slowly develop the color now with this glaze on the surface, I'm going to go ahead and start to work the shadow a little bit more. I feel like the shadow needs to be a little bit darker, and then, of course I'm talking about the cast shadow underneath the avocados. So again, I'm going to revisit that mixture of Prussian blue, raw umber, and just a touch of titanium white, and I'm going to start to push this value a little bit darker. And it should be pointed out here that, of course, this mixture is a little bit more dominant with the Prussian blue. We definitely want the shadow to feel blue and cool. We don't want it to be dominated by the raw umber, which, of course, is more of a warmer color and will kind of neutralize that shadow a bit. Now that we've got a good amount of color on the surface, we can kind of compare to the background. And it, I find it necessary at this point to add a little bit more color to the background so that we have a little bit more contrast happening between the avocados and the background. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper with the blue. It's still a very light application, but it has a little bit more of the Prussian blue in the mixture. Now, because I've addressed the background, I need to clean up some of the edges around the avocado. So again, we'll go back to our dark green mixture with the sap green, a touch of Prussian blue, and a bit of raw umber, and just clean up those edges a bit further. And now that our edges are all tidied up, our painting of an avocado with acrylic paint is complete. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out. If you're ready to learn more about acrylic painting, I suggest you check out the Acrylic Painting Academy. The Acrylic Painting Academy is a comprehensive painting course designed to guide absolute beginners to a level of producing professional quality acrylic paintings through concise and easy to digest modules that include high definition videos and eBooks. Designed for beginners, this course lays the foundation required for success with acrylics and painting in general. 
A wide variety of subjects and topics are covered in this course, including materials, surfaces, and tools, how to create the illusion of light and form in a painting, stretching canvas, direct and indirect painting, color theory, and color mixing are all covered. And we also cover a variety of different subject matter, including still life, landscape painting, as well as abstraction and non-objective painting. Now, I understand not everyone learns by watching videos, so downloadable eBooks are also included with each module to help you learn more efficiently. The course is over four hours of video instruction, and it also includes 14 eBooks. So if you're ready to learn more about acrylic painting, I suggest you take a look at the Acrylic Painting Academy.